And for the, for the public, is the best. Uh, I have, I, I see not the name from this banda uh, from Spain. I think some pressure was put on us by the Corpus Christi in the lunchtime in, in the center of Lugo town because the police band were playing and they really were marvelous and certainly many of their players I'd be also proud to have in our orchestra. The tour is two days old, two concerts down and two to go. Some of the players are up at three to catch the 5am flight from Lugo, anxious to see a bit of fabled Granada before duty calls again. Others prefer the more leisurely option of a two-hour stopover for sightseeing and other pleasures in the Spanish capital. getting up early this morning so we decided to come to Madrid and uh, we thought we were going to have five hours to, s to play with but we've only had two so we've just decided to eat our way through two hours and we're, where are we? We're sort of... Um, Mayor. so just a square in the middle of Madrid. And how have you enjoyed the tour so far? Oh, it's been fantastic. It's very good, you know, everybody's high spirit even though the venue in Lugo wasn't a good concert hall. I think everybody really felt, you know, the good spirit there. And do you, do you agree with that? I think we all enjoyed it. The band were marvellous on Wednesday night after a very difficult day. Um, I think that, you know, with, with all the tiredness of the orchestra and lack of sleep and so on, um, they really pulled out all stops <laughs> and played very well indeed. And I'm proud to be part of that unit, really, because it could have gone haywire, I think. It's comparatively a short tour, and I think you've just got to pace yourself, and a day like this is just what you need to make sure that tomorrow you're ready for the, the work, you know, and uh, 
if, if it was a two-week tour, um, I think we'd be, well, we'd be on our knees, wouldn't we, really? I think, I think you've just got to pace yourself, and having a, great, a break like this is ideal. As the travelling bands meet up again to rehearse the first of two Granada concerts, the tour hits a crisis. Guest conductor Maceras has had to fly back to England to face a family bereavement. Musical director Libor Peshek should replace him, but he was last seen checking in at Barcelona for a flight to Prague. <laughs> And on top of the problem of the missing conductor, there's the Andalusian heat. I think it's going to be a very hot rehearsal. Um, quite apart from body temperature, the instrument's going to get very hot too. In the Philharmonic Hall in Liverpool in winter, we do have an agreed industrial downward limit on the thermometer of where we don't play. I'm now wondering if we should establish an up upward limit for this one. It's a different problem altogether, I think. We should have to get going and see what it feels like, I think. When the first person passes out, then maybe uh, have to review the situation. Well, I'm just a little bit worried now that um, the instruments are going to crack in the sun for the rehearsal. It's, uh, we were told that the sun would be behind the orchestra for the rehearsal. And uh, I'm wondering whether we might even have to change rehearsal tomorrow. In uh, half an hour, we shall see where the sun has gone to. I would imagine it's going to be directly into the eyes of the, the violinists and um, whether there's some way we can move everybody back a bit. Everything was going rather smoothly <laughs> until we had the tragic news of uh, Sir Charles McCarris's uh, family bereavement. And uh, we arrived at the hotel from Santiago, greeted with this message, and it was a matter of then, very quickly, finding a replacement uh, for at least one of the concerts. And uh, I'd remembered that Libor was waiting in Barcelona airport for five hours. and. Uh, we managed to find, get through to him five minutes before he was going to go through the passport control at Barcelona airport. If he'd gone through the passport, we couldn't have had him because he has a Czech visa and it couldn't be reopened. His luggage was already on the plane to Prague and uh, that was a real stroke of luck. It's gradually, see, that's where Which the shadow is, going? is now. Going, that it's going, way, going down. down, the shadow yes. is there now, so it's only got that little bit of way. Well, if you look at that, yeah. it goes really down. No problem. So you're actually going to assemble them now? Yes. yes. We'll, we'll do it, we'll do it yes. in the, in the, in the, in the shade. <laughs> yeah. Somewhere deep in myself, I'm very opposed to touring because it uh, poses uh, to an orchestra and a conductor. Uh, new tasks uh, which we not always can solve in such a short time and I believe an orchestra plays much better at home in its own hall which shortcomings it knows and can can fight so uh, but on the other hand the life now is so that we really have to tour in order to exist uh, at home at all. So we have to exist internationally. So I only hope for the future that we really get uh, tasks abroad, which would be musically on the good and important level. I've seen four changes of principal conductor, which is quite unusual in the space of eight years. Each time we've had a change of conductor, I've thought, well, the orchestra's going somewhere and it's an upward momentum. And certainly with Libor, I think the future is very, very good. And there's a tremendous feeling of optimism artistically for the future. 
I was uh, somehow turned on by the whole attitude of the orchestra towards music and the capacity.